morning, everyone. Well, it's not even morning. It's 11 o'clock, so I don't got any coffee today to slurp on, but I do have some water. What we're going to do is a uh, Warriors of Dark Gods quick overview from the Social Distancing Team Tournament. So there are 34 teams of uh, four, and of those 34 teams, there are 15 Warriors players, so just under half the teams have taken Warriors. I think over half took High Elves. I think Warriors were the second or third most popular army. I think they were second to high elves um so i picked out all the 15 and actually some of these i haven't seen before some of these i have um there's a mix of players i know players who play warriors before players who don't really play warriors um from a wide range of countries so we're just going to go through and and uh see what we get um i'll tell you from my first glance it's, it's a lot of aggro a lot of aggro so keith is the first list up um, i just went in order of the teams and just picked them out so Keith is not a Warriors player. Um, I think this is his first, maybe even first game with Warriors, if not um, very early on. He's on a team that has another Vermin player, and then I know he plays Saurian sometimes, but they have a Saurian player as well. So I, I'm not shocked he picked Warriors, because um, he had talked to me about him before, and it's a great time to try him, right? Because it's an online tournament. So Battle Shrine Mage with Alchemy and Heirloom, so... All his magic is in that mage, and he gets two channels. So I've played this setup once, twice, one or two times, maybe two or three times. I had a extra veil, not the scepter of power. Though I think scepter of power is nice for things like comet. Um, besides, I actually think it's probably better in a team tournament than solo because you can kind of avoid some of the shooting that you don't want to face, like cans and stuff, because it is a nine hundred point caster. Um, that isn't very fast, um, similar to a Herald, I guess, if you think he's 70 more points, 75 more points than a Herald, but you get a five spell magic phase with Bail Walker that includes potential common or grave calls, um, and then I, I think Evo or Alchemy is an interesting choice to take. Evo has nice buffs, but I, and so does Alchemy with the armor, so I think both of them work in this army. I actually probably think Alchemy is the better choice given his army, um, yeah, I, I think Alchemy is the right choice, especially since if you really need like the the to get rid of armor stuff, you have potential, you know, spear, lash, all of which are like two die, um, good veil walker targets. He might lack uh, veils in this army. He doesn't have the item to store more veils. He only generates two. He has a lot of potential spells that want to be veil walkered. Um, I don't think it's gonna be a problem. I think the magic phase is just very strong as long as that guy doesn't die. Um, big greed unit to put him in potentially, or the lust unit. Um, greed kind of devalues him because of unless I can go wide and put him in, it's fine. Um, one war hound unit, so six chosen with greed, so he can pick any weapons. Three feldrakes with paired weapons, two chosen chariots of greed, two of feldrake elders, and then maw with one portal. So pretty much. It's it's always amazing to me how much you can get if you don't take a lot of heroes, right? If you just take one hero, that's pretty much your magic phase. And he can defend himself with three up, five up, and 2d6 plus two grinds. Um, it's amazing how many units you can fit in the army. So, sorry, let's see. I think the Chosen Chariot, Greed versus Lust debate is a big one. Um, I am okay with either one, personally. I am taking Lust. I have taken Greed. I just got tired of taking Wounds on um, my fucking Chariots from Terrain. So, first thing I, I like to look at with Warriors List is what's the magic setup? What's the scoring like? And then, if you have them all, how do you interact with it? How does your army interact with it? And then the last one would just be general power after that, right? So, like speed. So, let's see. So, he has them all with one portal. You know, normally when you take two Feldrake Elders, I feel like you don't take them all because they can't go through it, and you kind of lack units and go through it. But in this case, because he only took one hero, he it's actually nice because he can still fit enough units that, that make porting actually um, useful, or, or it doesn't feel as bad to, you know, spend 380 points on a on a Helmaw plus Elders. Uh, he has good units to port. Maybe something that might come up for him is that three... Of his portable units, the Warriors felt Chosen and the Feldricks don't have Musicians, which makes it a little more annoying to get in the portals. you got to make sure you put them in the right spot so that you can get on them. Um, it, 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 it's not a huge deal, um, especially given that those aren't 
it, it's not a huge deal. It's just something like to be aware of that you can't reform onto a portal without a musician because you have to end a move and not a reform. But also, you know, if the portal's next to you three inches away, you can't move sh- hit shift horizontally to get on it. So stuff like that. But oh, it's an interesting list. I'm curious how it does in pairings. And I, I've never played something. I've played pieces of this, obviously. Um, yeah, it's, I'm curious how the mall interacts with all of it, and if he feels like he gets the value out of out of it. Is it is it army slow? It's it's a slower army when you think he only has this is like I mean he has the Eldrix Feldrix which are fast. Could be um, one thing that might be a little annoying is you know no re rolls on these the big boys um, can get a little scary sometimes. But I mean he has the power there if it pairs well. Um, and I like having the option here to have a, what's it called, uh, Wrath of God with plus one to cast. So, yeah, I think uh, I think in a team event, this, this guy becomes a lot better. So that's a, that's a cool list. I like it. It's not what I thought he'd play um, if, if, if I had to guess what his Warriors list was going to be. But I like it. All right. Dimitri. I don't know where he's from. Um, let's see. This guy is, uh, so he has a chariot that's extremely hard to kill, being toughness six, uh, five aboard, and then you don't get magic items versus him. And he's MR3, so he doesn't die to magic very well either. So it's basically shooting or nothing. Because in combat, he's a beast. Five strength, seven, toughness six, two up save. Yeah, that's real nice. I like this guy. And, like, heroes don't get their magic weapons, so they kind of suck. Bill Walker Alpha can be a guy. Um. Oh, he still takes two. Okay, so he does take a ledger and a wasteland torch. So he has a good magic phase. Uh, this not having heirloom kind of sucks. It feels like it sucks, but maybe it's not a big deal when you have two other spells here and three channels. Big sloth units with banner of speed, but they're still kind of slow. This unit, which is just probably another scoring. So he does take a helm all. How many scoring does he have? So he has four scoring. Hmm. Wasteland Torch is interesting. Helm wall. Lash. Another chosen chariot of sloth. I mean he can join his lord to it. That's probably why he did sloth. He can make a he can make a unit of like this, this, and this if he wants. It's definitely a tough nut to crack. It's not the fastest army. He does have the gateway, which if you you know, if you portal this chosen unit together, even with a shrine, you're talking they have a rank. Um, he can ignore runes if he has this. Their toughness six. It's actually a pretty boss unit, and he doesn't have to. He can join the warriors. He actually has some pretty tough units to crack. Um, though it does feel like the army is a bit slow, so it's, I think it does a different job in the team setting. You you kind of like avoid the cannons that kind of hurt this guy and hurt the big chosen cherry, and just say, all right, well, small arm shooting, strength three and four bows does jack shit to this army. Um, and then you kind of walk up with a body of toughness five, toughness six, three up, two up, one up, save guys, and and see what happens. So that's a cool list. I'm curious how this does and what it pairs into. And a lot of things, let's be clear, with team tournaments, um, what team you're on, how good your team is, also what your job and the pairings is, is a big deal when it comes to how you perform. So a lot of times you'll you'll go to team tournament results and see warriors armies that score really high and they look kind of weird and sometimes it's because they're just on a bad team and they're a good player or they gave themselves the better matchups and it, like I said it, there's a lot more of what's your job in the team and stuff like that though so another cool list all right Thomas Arthur Jacobs don't know who this is so I guess we got all the gateways out of the way because I think there's only three malls in this army tournament so Harold. Another Tropic Ore guy. This guy's on a steed. Um, a Wizard Alchemy guy with Binding Scroll and Thrice Forge and Plate Armor. So he has a 1-up save on foot. And a Binding Scroll. This is 60 points. This is 75 points. I'd almost rather just see the 4 aboard, 4 plus save. But maybe it's fine if it's ever. You could also... I think you could... This, I mean... I don't understand why he's not, maybe it's because of that, why he's not on a 
Diaz. Extra wound, same save for the price of this. Um, well, you need to take one item. You need to take a 15. It's 80 points compared to 70. I mean, for five points more, he could have an extra wound and be on a bigger base. But whatever. Maybe he didn't have the points. Uh, eight Warhounds. Just a huge Zealot's Great Weapon. Wow, that's a big fucking unit of Toughness 5 Great Weapon, guys. Nine Chosen of Greed. Interesting. So his Lord... And then seven Knights of Greed, so his Lord can go in these two. And Wow. He just, like... I have one, two, three units. Oh, he has an Alchemy Master and a fucking Herald? Wow. That's interesting. Uh... I hope this is wrong, because that would be way... Don't count the numbers. 2,000. 900. Yeah, he's good on points. This number's wrong. This should be a 5, I'm guessing. No, it's a 4. I did the rough math. It doesn't look like it's over points. It actually looks like a very small army. Uh, scoring, 3 scoring, but all of them are super tough. Uh, I, I'm not a huge fan of it, this, I'm not a huge fan of it, to be fair, it seems very, like, I mean, yeah, he has the two gateways, which I guess are really scary when you're porting, like, 18 sloth great weapon guys in front of people, or nine chosen with potentially a chaos lord or herald, so maybe it's better than I give credit for, but it, it doesn't, like, it looks kind of boring to me. We'll see. Interesting. All right, what do we got now? Oh, this guy's going Feldrix. So we have a Dragon Sorcerer. All right, there are a couple of these, including myself. Um, Obsidian Rock, of course. Hero's Heart is always an interesting. I think you should take it. It's not that expensive for this guy. Um, so he took Evo on his Dragon. He has a Veilwalker Adept with Magical Heirloom. So he has five spells. This is actually an interesting combo because Heirloom is 50 points. The upgrade to the Master is 150. So for 100 points, you would get a spell and plus one the cast. So first you ask yourself, is that, if that's worth it for 100 points. So like, would you rather have three spells with the Veilwalker or four spells with plus one the cast? Because that's the same point. So and a naked. Then this one might even be better. Um, given that he has an evil guy. So he still has five spells, good spells. And I guess with alchemy on the sorcerer on foot, you don't really... Because he can take... Because you don't... And you get access number six and number five. And on alchemy, number six is actually very good with Veilwalker. But so is... Like, you're either going to take... Like, you're going to probably take Hellfire on this guy, or you have to. And then you're probably going to take... If you have good anti... If you need anti... um Armor, you take the... um two spells molten copper and lash and then you can take two buffs on evo like whispers and um re-rolls and, and and with re-rolls are very good against with big feldrick units and a big warrior block um just because you have these massive units so buffs become even better and plus two armor is really good he can have really nasty buff phases because he can have plus two armor he could have glory of gold he could have re-roll a wound he could have minus one yeah it's actually a pretty dirty magic phase um and oh, he has free light too. Okay, hmm. and he has a this guy, a lust burning portent, dark prelate. Because he can't be the general, so he can't get rid of will save. But he just goes in. I'm guessing the warrior block and just says fuck it, walk up and do some stuff. He can also go in this one if he needs to. That's nice. Yeah, redirector, redirector. Ah, I like this list more than I thought I would. Um, you can always get in trouble because he has two Feldrake units without standard of discipline and without um a herald to give them guiding light so that worries me a little bit they could just tear off the board on nine unrollable or just panic from each other or just panic from themselves or just lose combat by one and fucking run like it's it's scary in that instance and when you add in a Feldrake Elder, now you have to watch on the board because they can panic each other and they don't get rerolls. Um, but you have a lot of threats to worry about in 10 Feldrakes, an Elder, and a Dragon Rider, who's pretty good for the points when you consider it's 4 Strength 5 on the Rider. 
and it's a dragon. Um, like I said, I have the same thing. So, yeah, I'm curious how that works. Because, yeah. Another aggro list. Jaron. Ancestor, Elder. I don't know. I hate how this is, like, out of order. Like, who does this? Who puts all their core at the bottom and then, like... I don't know who does it this way, but... So his character is a behemoth master on occultism. Without Bellwalker, that's fine. Still good. Symbol slaughter, paired weapon guy. Yeah, points. I was making sure the points were right in my head. 650, symbol slaughter, 70, 80, Yeah, it's fine. Um... Two big boys. So he has the standard discipline, but he doesn't have musicians, which is weird because on this big of a unit, you kind of want to be able to... Like, the problem without musician here is if somebody comes and, like, corner clips you or, like, forces a, cha a you know a clip on one Feldrake, and then you get to fight with one or two Feldrakes, depending on the unit, you don't have the musician to, like, reform and move eight inches around them or something else. You're kind of stuck. You can get blocked in really easily. Um... So I don't like that he doesn't have musicians. His scoring is three units, one being a shitty barbarian horseman unit. But, I mean, you have the two big Feldrax. It's... And he has a big-ass wizard on a thing. So he has a lot of... I mean, it's... it's As far as, like, aggro army goes, it's kind of... It's just... It's there. I mean, just look at it. Right? It's... He has a good magic phase. I like the sorcerer build, to be honest. Um... When you think about it, 800 points for a wizard master, is that really all it costs for that guy? He doesn't have Veilwalker. He just feels... Man, I'm trying to compare it to my own dragon for points. He takes that, I take that, I take that, he takes that. Oh, he doesn't have... Uh... Oh, he doesn't have Hero's Heart on him. So it's still fine, it's just not that fighty. I mean, if you are if you don't stomp... Like, if you, if you can't stomp the thing, that character... Sorcerer is not the most fighty thing in the world. Um, I mean, it loses four strength five instead of it has four, three strength three, so it's not the end of the world. To be fair, I wondered how he got the points. Um, yeah, I, I, it's fine. I don't know. He has no flying, so redirectors work pretty well versus this army. You can chaff it pretty easily. Huh. His magic is pretty good. Hmm. Hmm. It's kind of just a. It is what it is, right? It's two big Feldrak units. They're blocky. And he has three character, three single models to help you. It's it's very blocky and very big footprinty army. Um, so I, I found Feldrakes are very strong. But taking too many, you kind of fill up the board. And you can get outplayed a little easier. Um, again, he has the issue of three, four Feldrak units. All which, as you increase them, they can only panic each other. And they don't get rerolls, so anyway, I guess these guys get rerolls. But when you, the more units you get, the more that rule that nothing else panics them starts to go away because now all you have is units that panic each other, and you're one leadership nine check away from panicking your Feldrick elder because these guys broke next to him, right? So that's a big deal. Um, again, a lot of the, is in team tournaments, the aspect is a lot different. David Slaw. Dragon, but it's a chaos this time. Oh, motherfucking Horton Dragon. I like it. And he has Gluttony, so he doesn't really need Idle Spite. Um, it's still obviously very good. Prelate's pretty good on a dragon because of the rerolls and the good spells and Adept. So he's an Adept, Herald, and Burning Port. Oh, this is pretty nice. Pretty nice build. Max Heroes. All right. So his magic phase is just as good as my magic phase is. So I have to approve. Um, and this goes really well with the dragon because if you get the alchemy attribute on him, it also works for the breath weapon, works for the porn. Um, good, very good buffs. Um, and this guy with plus two armor on both the herald and the dragon as well as the um, glory of gold. This is for his wizard, it seems like. A redirecting unit. Envy, Standard Bear, Zealots. I never understood Zealots banner on Warriors, but maybe if you go six wide and you get six extra strength four, it's not actually that bad. Um, I would have probably preferred Banner of Speed to actually be faster, especially with Envy. So now you're move five Swift Stride. 
Um, but he might just be trying to get min core. No, he was he's over a core by fifty some points. He didn't even need to take that banner. He could have took sixty points somewhere else. Okay. Uh, no musician here again. I think is a mistake. I think it's a mistake not to take a musician on a six man Feldrake unit. Uh, like why do you need the bow here? Like you could have dropped bows. Like I think there's some points lacking. I think the bow and this and this banner could have been. You could easily got a musician for this unit. I think it would even be good on this unit to be fair, just because. Just just how much you can move with it, and like get your model. I don't know. This isn't my favorite list here. Um, obviously, I mean, it, it, like a lot of the flavors of these lists are some form of aggro, some form of Feldrakes and Elders and Dragons and Wizards and Heralds. Um, the theme for this tournament, for Warrior's sake, is a lot of fucking aggro. Um, not many people are going for the kind of safer Horn and Mage in a unit of Warriors with... Uh, like portals to back it up, which is a very good style and very tough to break. Just look at Thomas Moeller in the next list at Coronacon. It was very, he was very hard to break him um, and break his list. Uh, but I think in the team event, especially four man team event, and maybe some of it has to do with being on UB as well, just like wanting to go aggro and saying, I'm going to go get the points. Um, I'm not going to sit back and be this pairing person. So I think that's an interesting take on it. Um, this event that people are going much more aggro. So I think this list, it's not, like I said, it, the Porden can be really good on a dragon. I've played it before. It's nice. Um, yeah. I don't love, I mean, what's his scoring? This, this, I don't like his scoring. It's a little lacking. I mean, he has two good units to score plus this unit sucks. I mean, this unit can, can deal something and his wizards has to go in it probably. I mean, the thing is, like, with Warriors, like, you, for how scared you are, you know, playing a dragon in general. And like, I have a dragon. You'll see it coming up. So it's not, I'm not hanging on a dragon. For how scary it is to play with a dragon when people have shooting, when you play against no cannons, you're kind of like, hey, fuck yeah, I'm going out there and, and doing what I do. So, you know, if you get the right pairing, this, like, risky, anything risky just kind of goes away. I, I would like to see a musician here. Is pretty much the biggest big I, I, musician here, maybe banner of speed here. Um, he didn't have the points to do that. Let's see if there's any. Like I would have taken paired weapons from here, the bows from here, made this banner of speed, give this musician. If I had to make like an easy like high level change, he also has an extra dog that's unneeded because like I said, he's over core by sixty three, six seventy two. So he's seventy two points in core. He could have dropped off if he wanted. Definitely a dog. I mean, he could have dropped the dog in this bow and gotten the musician on this unit. I don't understand. These bows are worthless. Um, all right. Not my problem. Not my list. Um, doo -doo -doo, Thomas. So he's he. this guy had 100% stole my idea. And you'll see my list below it. I should have put my list first. Um, but it's not actually that. It's close without being close. So he has a really good Chimera guy with plus inscriptions, you know, four board, five of board, four board because of luck of the dark gods. Um, fast. He has a master on a dragon. We saw this before. He takes the hero heart version, an heirloom, so five spells. Um, no veil walker, which is something. His core is very similar to mine. Barbs, hounds, hounds two lust units. The lust are nice because they can go into rain and not take TTs. They can flee and rally and move again. Um, so his scoring is pretty good. He has four scoring units, all pretty cheap. So basically what the idea here is he got out of his core, he got two score, three scoring units and two chaff for min core. He's a little over core, min core actually. You'll see mine's actually min core and it's very similar. Um, and the lust units are not actually that easy to break. Uh, they have champions, which is nice for challenging like big monsters and holding them for a turn. Um, it's just a solid core without being like it can fight off chaff and shit like that, but you can score and it's not like so. Sometimes what you'll see is with like armies like this, if 
if you're playing spoils or secure target, it can be hard to get, like, you almost don't want to split. Like, none of these units want to go on the flank by itself if nobody's going to fight there. Because you need this unit for the mage, and maybe you don't. This unit, you don't want to spend 600 points to get one secure target or one spoils target sometimes if it can't get to the fight. So, um, I had trouble, and mine was even worse because I took one warrior block, three Feldrake Elders, and six knights. And it was just like, like in Breakthrough, it's like you can't put one of these units on the far flank and just let it run up the board because you're wasting, quote unquote, wasting six, seven, eight hundred points. And there's times where you look on turn four and you're like, okay, I either have to move my unit into the deployment zone now because I'm never going to make it back. Or I'm going to have to go fight something. And it's a lot different when it's a small unit that doesn't matter and when it's one of your main blocks. So I, I, I do I think three scoring is bad? No, but I like this idea of four scoring um, and two to redirectors at a core. Um Two less chariots. I think chosen chariots are really good. I know he was playing greed before. I was playing greed before. A big reason for the switch has been just pure. Um, I don't know why he did it, but I'll tell you why I did it in a second. All right, sorry, I had to pause for a second. Um, so chosen chariots are very strong on their own. Um, very beefy. Six strength, five attacks. If you go greed. You get very nice options of 6 strength 6, 8 strength 4, or the halberds. Um, so I think the difference is, unless there's only 5 more points. So it's not a points thing. It's, do you want to be a stronger fighting unit? Or do you want to be a more versatile unit that can flee? Um, so one thing with chariots is, especially what I found is, they're great pivot points for like other models to like hit you and overrun. And so... If you take long charges with them, like 8s, 9s, 10s, and things that don't aren't guaranteed, you kind of get into this problem of, oh, shit, you know, I try, if you try a 12-inch charge with it, or a 10-inch charge and fail, sometimes it's so bad because they can charge you back and you can't do anything about it, and you're just fucked, right? So if you take Lust, you can make some of those long charges, and the enemy has to think twice, because if they charge you, you're going to flee and rally on three dice and can be able to move again, right? That is a big deal, a huge deal. Just the option to flee, let alone the option to flee, rally on three dice, and move again. Um, versus, you know, combat power. Now, add in to the fact that you're a 340 point, 345 point chariot with five wounds, and every wound you take from dangerous terrain is worth like 70 points, essentially. I can't tell you how many games most of my chariot's wounds came from charging a wall. Think about this if you charge a unit on a wall, and break them and pursue them, you will take 60 T's on a two. You take th two wounds on average. Like you could just die from doing that. A wound here and there, and all of a sudden you die to one failed save. That's the problem. So there's so many hills and runes and walls on maps that there's something about just saying, fuck you, DTs. Um, especially now that you can flee. Fleeing like into runes and rallying, you can sit in runes and be minus two to shoot hit from shooting and then charge out and not take wounds from it. So there's a lot of like advantages here. Um I do think you need a strong army with it to take advantage of the fleeing and also take advantage of you need some strength six. He doesn't have as much strength six as maybe I do to back it up. But, you know, you, he has some other good stuff. He has Feldrakes. He has Feldrake Elder. Um, he has a big brother giant that can go in here, and it's twelve. It'll be a twenty-eight man unit. Um, it helps us other monsters. I, I've taken a Tribal Warspear giant. I liked it. I almost had one in my list, um, but I changed it for another model, which we'll see because I'm the next list. So yeah, I like this list a lot. Um, you know, we'll have heavy parallels to mine, and we'll comment about those. I'm actually playing him round one, so I'm playing against my uh, the same, a similar list to my own. So. Here's my list. Um, as you can see, it's very similar to his in the sense that I have pretty much the same core, except I stripped out all the command to make it min-min core. He's um, a couple, like, 80 points over. I have the same Lust Chariots as he does. Um, so I'm taking... What's the big difference? We both have an Elder. I take an extra Feldrake, and I have Standard Musician Champion. Obviously, I don't have Standard Discipline, and I've talked about that, but I only have four, and I also have the Exalted Herald to give Div to my, both these units, so that's something reason why. 
Um, four is a nice number. You can run them two by two. They have 12, 13 strength, six attacks. I do like um, the halberds in this particular list because I lack the strength six from the chosen chariot. So I have strength six here, strength six here. Um, so I have a similar dragon. The only difference is I have binding scroll. Essentially, he's a master mage and I'm not. So I'm only an adept and he's a master. I do have binding scroll. He doesn't. Um, so one of the ideas is you could run a dragon with a chaos lord on it naked for around the same amount of points. If you obviously if you go poor and it becomes a different build, but I mean the rider of a chaos dragon only has five strength five without a weapon, right? So he's maybe if you take a lance for five strength seven, which is it's obviously better than this guy, but like there's not many things that this dragon can't kill and get you in the depth that a Chaos Lord Dragon can't do. Like, right? So it's not that big a difference in my opinion. Um, so this is what I have instead of that giant. I think in this particular matchup, his giant suits better because of how many big models we both have. But I think there are a lot of things. If you think about elves and shooting, right? Would an elf rather shoot at a, you know, Topsness 5 giant with no save or 6-up save? Or this guy moves 20 with a 2-up save for shooting and is immune to alchemy magic, essentially. Um, being moved 20 is pretty cute. I'm curious how it does. I don't know. I've never used it before. But just having, you know, in a in a pretty fast list, just having an annoying model that, you know, 2-up save against non-magic. The model has like 4 strength, five, 7 strength, 5 attacks and a stomp. 9 with leadership with re-rolls built in. It can flee. It's, 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 it's almost like a chosen chariot that moves faster. Um, it's just another interesting piece. And I like taking the Herald. Obviously different than, you know, he basically takes this. You know, the big difference is if you say that this giant cancels out my giant or my barbarian chief, then it's basically I'm taking my magic phase as a Herald and a Adept, and his is a master of occultism. I have options for Veilwalker. He doesn't. And then you're saying the fighting power of this guy versus maybe the fighting power of an exalted herald, which is different. They're just different models. Um, it's hard to compare. It's just different styles. Uh, I have access to Comet. He doesn't. We both have. He has a better save. I have more wounds. I can potentially heal. His dragon can heal him. I can't. Um, yeah, there's not much else to say. The lists are very similar to each other. It's just different styles of, you know, is the dra which matchups is the giant better than the barb chief? And then would you rather have a herald? Would you have a magic phase? We both have five spells. Would you rather have a magic phase of two adepts with maybe better different spell selection or more wide variety of spells? I don't know. I like them both. Uh, how many more lists do we got? Oh my god. We're still going. All right. I need keep going. Let's keep going. All right. Oh, something different. Ooh, another battle shrine guy. Lord of the Damned. Veilwalker. So he takes the Evo version, but I think Evo in this particular one's better because the buffs aren't as good for the Forsworn and Forsaken ones and the Wretched ones. Um, yeah, this is a pretty basic list. I'm not going to lie. It's, it's actually pretty fun for team events. So... Big ass unit of warriors. I hope he knows that this is just for this is for um, scenarios because the it doesn't work. The Realms Banner doesn't work on a shrine, so he's probably gonna put a shrine in here and just have this, you know, toughness five unit that walks around with a character in it that's really good, and then he's gonna, t you know, he has potentially twenty four spawns if the damnation guys happen to break. And then you have to deal with this. So he's a bunch of unbreakable random movers and then two giant blocks that if they ever do break, which they can, um, they become spawns as well. So like this is like a nightmare for like demons because of just, you know, it's actually pretty good in probably this high elf meta. I mean, the high elves can like shoot them down and stuff, but it's a lot of beef to get through. And then when they get to you and they touch you and they're like D6 plus one hits each. Strength four with potential, you know, your the magic could be whispers of the veil, reroll to wound, both of which are really good. Um, not on top of just having like comets and grave calls and snipes if he wants it. That's another big deal when you take Evo on the battle shrine. You could potentially be facing double snipes, grave calls, 
Hellfire, and then a buff. And yeah, it's not the greatest in combat buffs, but you pretty much only in this type of armor you probably take Whispers, reroll the wound, and then three damage spells and just your mat. It's actually I think in a team event this is actually a really cool list. It's not the yeah I like this list. I like it from a team event. Like in solo, it's kind of annoying probably. All right. Jeez. Oh, Another herald. Two elders. Battle shrine. So the magic here is just Herald Battle Shrine. And no other magic. Not my favorite magic phase. Um, four spells is not a lot. And it's not like the Battle Shrine spells are like, I guess if you take Whispers on it, you have a buff. I don't know. I think it's lacking one spell, but it's very fighty besides that. I mean, when you have Elder, Elder, Battle Shrines are great on their own. Um, he has no chaff except for this unit, which is chaff, but at the same time, it's a lot of points, 305 points. I do like Flares with Skinning Lash, don't get me wrong. I don't see the point of a musician other than minus one. It's all, a musician only is plus one leadership and taking march. I don't get the musician part for 20 points. That just seems like a waste, um, personally. I don't know what else I would get for it. Maybe that's just nice to have for what he's doing, but yeah. Five points over core, which is if it's fine. Lust, lust. Yeah, it's fine. Black Steed, Chaos Lord. We have a four up save. Great weapon. I mean, it's a strong Chaos Lord. It's not fun to face that guy. Um, and then it kind of, the one nice part about that setup is it gives his six warrior knights MR4, which means, you know, it's much harder to cast that one, like, F U um, metal spell, but that is one of the problems with the Knights of Lust is just if somebody does try to force it through and they kill like four knights, they just become kind of sad. Uh, I don't know. It's like half the army is really slow and half the army is like kind of fast, and the magic isn't the strongest, but it can be. It'll it's fine. I don't love the list. I don't hate the list either. Um. Yeah. Oh, this is so expensive. I I don't not a huge Warrior Knights fan anymore. But I mean, I I do think the idea of, like taking a super strong Chaos Lord cuz like I said in some matchups if they can't shoot you down, right? If they don't have cannons, then you can just run your characters out by themselves and they're super strong by themselves, right? So All right. Small break. All right, we're back. Oh, takes a long time to do this. Exlith, Herald again. Shrine. Looking at the magic. Herald, Shrine, Depth, Alchemy. Like it. Binding Scrolls, nice. Two travel war spree giants. Yep. Elder paired weapons. So if you look at my Coronacon list, the last one I played. It's, is it similar to this? Uh, this would have been a chariot guy. And this would have been two chosen chariots. It's the only, I mean, it's pretty much just, it's similar to that. A lot of sloth guys in this tournament. Interesting. So the barbarians are nice. I like travel war speed giants. Just good against a lot of big stuff that's out there. Um, you only lose one AP compared to the club. It's about 10 points more or something. You can go in that barb unit with one of them if you're worried about shooting. He has three scoring is probably the weakness of this list because it's three Feldrakes, a 16-man barb, and 18 warriors, so it's not the most durable. I mean, he has one slow, durable scoring unit, but it's not like the rest is super solid. Magic phase, th six good spells, three channels. Um, Herald can just take over the game if you choose Veilwalker and just start blasting people. Um, a strong cast lord. On Wardia, so yeah, that, I mean, that, I mean the the block of warriors with that guy is super scary. Um, Immortal Gauntlets, paired weapon, such a greatness. So it's strength six, AP three, Death Cheater. Immortal Gauntlets can be flaming if he needs to for the adept uh, alchemy attribute. Good buffs. Um, 
maybe a little slow because that unit's pretty slow to move you know to move four unit backed up by a bunch of things that are kind of faster um, not too much else to say honestly um, how much is yeah, it's over me four it's fine yeah it's solid would I change anything I mean he doesn't the thing with then you take a list like this is that like your min core and you're like, there's nothing little to drop here, right? The only extra points he has are some of the upgrades. But he doesn't have, like, a lot of, he doesn't take command. He wasn't taking, you know, extra models in his unit. So if you're going to change something, you kind of have to full-fledged change it. Um, curious how it does. Oh, here we go. Bellwalker cultism can't hate. This is the thing I like is the plate armor on a on a war DS. He's a one up save. <sighs> Wizard master with four wounds. Adept on Evo. Book of Arcane Master. You don't see that too often. This is a interesting. So he's a one up save. He's a one up save hero that gets that has five four strength, five AP ten. He's general, the barbarian chief, I guess, for the extra. Okay, on foot. Hmm. Hmm. I've seen him play this list before. Hmm. Hmm. Right. He has three channels. Interesting that he took Evo. I guess he wants the option for a couple snipes if needed. Oh, this is unique list. Halberds on the Helder. Isn't that... I think this points is wrong. I thought Halberd was 10 points less. Look into that. Yeah, I thought it was 10 points less for the Halberd. Maybe not. Maybe it's the same. I don't have much to say about this list. Hmm. Has some cute little things. I mean, this guy moves twenty. This guy's on foot in a unit of paired weapon barbarians. But maybe with Evo spells, it becomes really nice because you get reroll to hit, reroll to wound. Plus, you have whispers, which makes the AP ten of the this guy better. He has three chaff units and some big fast big boys, and then knights. I can't say he's lacking particularly anywhere except. I think his biggest lacking, if you look compare his list to a lot of the other warrior lists, is he just doesn't have those like big fuck you heroes, like right. This chief, yes, it's cool. He's four strength five, but he he pretty much can die like a bitch, um, and he's not going out there and wiping out you know army. He doesn't have a dragon. He doesn't have a herald. He doesn't have a huge chaos lord. I think that's where this list has a lot of pieces. But, you know, does he have those super big heroes that can kind of go out there and do what they need to do? And I'm not saying you need them, but this is an example of, like, spending a lot more points on magic without any fighting, right? So this is, this together is 900 points, a little under 900, and it doesn't fight at all, which is fine. It's not, like, a problem, but, you know... For some reason, the people like the Herald and maybe a Dragon Mage or something is you get fightingness built into your casting. Like, if this for a hundred points, this guy could be on a without this item. This guy could be on a chariot with Hero's Heart. Then you had four strength five chariot that still has two spells. You don't get Book of Arcane Mastery, but it's another piece to fight, which might be good in this type of list. But I like Panther Q. We'll see how he does. It's a unique list compared to what we've seen. All right. Matt Paris, don't know who this is. Chaff, chaff, wretched ones. And uh, Wrath, ooh, I like this. Musician, good, there you go, bullet man. What is this, Chosen Lord? Right, nothing too crazy. Just a Strength 7 Lord with Death Cheater. A Wizard Master of Evo on a horse. Yep. So, I guess he has to be Wrath on the Warrior. I mean, this is a pretty nasty unit to think of. Does he have MR? One MR here. Oh. 
Oh, he has two binding scrolls. Okay. Never mind. He has one MR and he has two binding scrolls. Oh, I think that's fine. I think you could also have gone one binding scroll, an MR, and save 30 points on something, but not necessarily. It doesn't seem like he's missing anything particularly elsewhere. Relentless, Relentless Banner Greed Unit with 20. Okay, he's just... Yep. He's just... He's like three units. Minus four with the wretched ones. And then some chaff. He has four scoring. It's... It's not the craziest list. It doesn't, you know, he has a big blocky block, a big blocky Feldrakes, a big blocky Warrior Knights, and then some Wretched Ones. It's solid. Like, Warriors are just hard to break, period. Like, if you've watched, you know, they're always tough, and they hold points, and they all have rerolls, and, you know, this list especially, if you think about it, you know, just the the Warrior bus, the 700 points, you know, he has almost all his points in three units, and two characters that go in that unit. So if you can't kill the warrior knights with wrath, it becomes a big freaking problem for you because if you charge them there, they go first or initiative six or five with great weapons and like strength six and 20 attacks, right? 20 strength six attacks before you get to go potentially. Um, so you got to deal, you know, warrior knights can always die. Um, interesting. Very interesting. It just doesn't feel like dynamic because like, your heroes aren't, like, your, your units are pretty blocky, as I've been saying. You don't have any single models to play with. Rory Stoves. <sighs> All right, Cleansing Light for Flamey. Okay, interesting. Evo Master, yep. It's a good magic phase. He doesn't have, he doesn't have Veil Walker, but honestly, I don't, I don't think you have to take Veil Walker with Evo um, because you don't – only one of the snipes need the rerolls. I mean, the distance is always pretty good. And then, I mean, it's nice for Hellfire, but you can get away with it. It's 100 points. It's not cheap, so I can understand keeping them cheap. Another Warrior block with Zealot's Banner that always interests me. Why you want, like, four more extra attacks on your guys. I guess if you go, like, six or eight wide, it's a lot more attacks. Three Feldrak units. I do like Halberds and Parry Weapons. And they have their rerolls. Again, you're running into the same issue of you have five units that can panic each other. At leadership nine, and it's pretty blocky. Um, I mean, it's 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 a lot to get through. It's it's it is what it is. It's what you see, right? It's a big warrior block with a wizard, two chaff units, three big single models, and two big units of Feldrax. Takes up a lot of space. It doesn't fly. It's immune to fucking fire magic. It's pretty good versus alchemy magic. It's a lot of beef to deal with. In a team tournament, that's really good. But there's just not much to say about it. It's not like... I don't know what else to say about it. Yeah. And then we got last one. The Boss Hog Jeff. So, yeah, this is pretty much Jeff's ETC list from last year. Except, I think he... Oh, uh, well, he put Alchemy in. So, when I was reviewing lists, I saw that he had Alchemy. And I had to ask him specifically if he had Alchemy. Because... It's the default option in New Recruit, and I know he doesn't use it. Um, and so I was worried he accidentally didn't take his evocation that he normally takes, but he's trying something new. Um, so let's see what we got. We got the wizard guy on a chariot with the hero's heart. Again, it's a nice setup. Probably the, the part that hurts me, that, that feels... Six sixty five. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so you know he's paying. So I take I've taken a chariot guy with the same like magic setup, or like it's not a wizard master, it's just a adept, and it's it's a nice piece to have. The problem is now you're you're kind of putting your magic phase or a big portion of it. Uh, let me rephrase this. I don't see why this guy has to be the the veil walker occultism guy. Like, if he had a Veilwalker occultism guy on foot, and then this guy was an adept on alchemy, I just don't think you need two wizard masters, and then one being Veilwalker. There we go. That's I said it. Because I think Veilwalker is really good on alchemy also. If you're Like, if you're taking the alchemy guy on foot, like, I guess you can take armor, glory of gold. You know, like, you kind of want the rerolls on some of the other spells. I don't know. I don't... I just feel like if you just shift the wizard master points... 
and the Veil Walker to the guy on foot, and then take off. You can save like 150 points from this list and get something else. But maybe there's nothing else. Who knows? I've always said this list could use a Helm Wall too, for like a, a naked Helm Wall for late game stuff. But it's a tough army to crack. Like, let's just. I mean, I again, I don't like the Shield Breaker either. If you have. I, I would have liked Porin. I think it's really good in pairing. Snap Porin. I think Shield Breaker. Like, and he is pre late. I'm, I'm shit talking Jeff just because I can, and he knows that I shit talk this list all the time. It's just, I didn't like his, I don't like his magic setup, but it's tough. I mean, it's a lot of beef. It's a lot of beef to get through. He takes the champions and musicians. He takes the banners of discipline, which is good. Um, I'll say maybe what he's going to, one of the things I liked about his other list, the Evo was just, I think Evo buffs are really good for Feldrakes. And then obviously plus two armor and glory gold are actually very good for Feldrakes too. So I can't actually hate on that. It's a beefy list that's hard to, it's hard to win big against unless you really crack it open. And that's, and that's something I, I'll say my overall judgment of some of these lists, and there are some unique ones in there, like the Panter Cues and the, the one with all the, this one. Um, I think it's just different levels of aggro and beefiness. Like some people are saying, if you're going like two Feldrick units and a big warrior block, to me, you're saying, I want to make it hard for people to crush me. But my list isn't going to be as dynamic because you can't do as much with those big blocky units as you can with like an elder or single models. But it's harder to break. And then I think you shift to the spectrum of people who go like a lot of single models like dragons and elders and whatever. I think you open up the opportunity to make more plays, but you run the risk of you have less wounds. You have higher value wounds to play with. So it's a range, and it, no one is better than the other, and they serve different roles and teams. Um, but I think that's kind of where, like in my head, where like it kind of sits with me is this playmaking versus a little more blocky type shit. Um, but yeah, you know, <laughs> I expect Warriors to do pretty well this event. It'll be funny if they have to play each other a lot, because so many teams have them, and then you have two aggro armies versus each other. And kind of like the little things of how they interact. Um, I guess I expected more Chosen Chariots. There's only seven, I think, total in the tournament. Um, I saw a lot more Chosen Lords than I thought I would. I don't know why. I don't know why I'm surprised by that. I think my quick stats was there are four Dragons, five Heralds, two Feldrake Ancestors, 14 Feldrake Elders, three Maws, and two Portents. And then a bunch of other shit that I didn't count how much it is. Um, but yeah, there's actually a pretty good wide variety of lists, even though I'd say we all tend toward a little more aggro. Um, there weren't too many units that weren't seen, at least in one list. Um, is there anything up top of my head that no one took? Normal Chimeras. I didn't see any of those. Mm, that's about it. There could be something else that if it's, it's uh, no, I don't even know. I don't even know if there is another unit. Oh, Chosen Knights, because Chosen Knights suck. Um, but there are no Chosen Knights that I saw. But anyway, yep, that's my little high-level thoughts on Warrior list. I, I like, uh, do I have a favorite? Let's see if I have a favorite. Hmm. I like Keith's a lot, because I really do like this character. Um, and I like kind of what he did with it, putting it in a Helm Wall list. Again, where do things like this lack is where you don't have, like, super fighty characters, but you make up for it with, you know, this. And the, and that's always, like, the age-old question of what's stronger, fighty characters or fighty units? And they both have their, their pluses and their minuses. I like Keith's list. I obviously like my own list from its own perspective. I think this list is nothing super I don't want to say it's not creative but it's like if you're going to take the wretched one like forsaken one combo of random movers it's not exactly like like you, it is what it is right you, you took this you took the guy which is I think it works really well in this army to have this particular model and then he filled it with some scoring that he needed um I think he has interesting options, but I'm not, I don't know, he has like a little bit of everything. I don't really love everything. 
That's about it. I mean, I... Is there any list I don't like? I don't like some of these. Uh, this is... I don't know. This is kind of like, can you deal with the two portals or not? But I, he also has the advantage of, like, his portable units are just so strong. Curious how this one does. I think in good matchups, this one could be really strong. That's it. Thanks for listening.